Hallelujah, we bless your name, God. Come on, COJ, open Hallelujah, up your mouths and talk Jesus. to your Savior. Hallelujah, God. Come on, a lot of times we go seven days without opening up our mouths. Come on, I just want to hear James. I just want to hear James. Come on, James, talk. Come on, even now, if you could just enter, enter into your place, enter into your zone. Come on, there's a zone that you can find right now with Jesus. Concentrate on him. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. Lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to see. Together, lovely. You're all together, lovely. All together, all together, worthy. All together, all together, wonderful to me. Come on, COJ. I know you know that. Release that right there. Say, here I am to work. At home, if you could just lift your hands in this atmosphere. Here I am to bow down. Here I am. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're my God. You're all together. You're all together. Love all together. All together. Worthy. All together. All together.
hands. Lift your hands. Oh. My grandmother always told me when you don't know what to say, just make a noise unto your Savior. Oh. Oh. And in that noise, victory can arise. Victory can arise. Oh. Oh. We call it a war cry. If you need some angels to war on your behalf, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. I just want to hear the voices say, just the voices say, oh. oh. Worshippers, just the COJ. Oh, 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 with our tithe and with our offering. Remember, there are three ways you can give here at the City of Joy. You can give via Cash App, that's City of Joy Baptist. You can also give via Givelify by searching City of Joy Baptist Church in the Givelify app. And you can also give via P.O. Box, that's City of Joy Baptist Church, P.O. Box 250, Clinton, Maryland. And while you're getting that information together, let's prepare our hearts and minds for our tithe and declaration. As an act of faith, love, gratitude, and a heart for the house, we bring our tithe and offering from our house and release it into yours. Because I am a generous and consistent giver, the fear of lack has been broken and has no power over me. As I give today, I'm believing for health and healing, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, bills paid off, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, and finding money. Thank you, God, for watching over your word to perform it in my life, my family, and my money. You have blessed me to be a blessing, and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house may be fulfilled. Amen. Let's bless those seeds as they go into the ground. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for all that you've blessed us with and all that you've blessed our hands to receive and to hold. Father, in this moment, as we come surrendering our tithe and our offering unto you, we pray and ask God that you would bless it. And Father, as we move in an act of faith and in obedience to your word, we stand in anticipation of what this seed, what this offering, what this tithe and offering will unlock. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And we pray and ask God that you will continue to use it to, to advance and build up your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. COJ Connect Church, thank you for your giving. We pray that the Lord blesses you richly in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. As you're going to Luke chapter 2, we want to ask our God, even at home, stand on your feet with the word. Whether you're joining us at our 11 o'clock service, at our 5 p.m. or at our 8 p.m., we have to get our hearts prepared to receive what heaven has to say. We need God to help us, lead us and guide us as we go into his holy and immutable word. As we go to your word, help us all over the world. Lord, help us, lead us.
Let's make a heavenly choir, a heavenly orchestra all over the world. Lord, have Lord, leave. Won't you guide, 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 guide us as we go into your world. Luke chapter 2, I just want to lift up one verse. For the sake of time this morning, that is verse 14, Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Listen to these wonderful words from angels. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. I want to look at that last clause, ladies and gentlemen, those four words, goodwill toward all men. And I'm talking for a few moments this morning from the subject, it's all good. It's all good. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this wonderful worship. We thank you for vibrant worshipers who love on you through the songs, through the prayers, through the scripture readings. We ask that you guide us by the rings of our minds as we go into your word to hear a word from heaven that will encourage us, that will empower us, that will lift us no matter what we're in. So we will forever give your name praise, honor, and glory. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you shall forever and always ever be our redeemer in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Be seated in the presence of God. Look at two people around you, front, back, and to the side, and just say, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important when we get into the Christmas story to understand that at the time of our text, angels are singing. They're singing with the words, glory to God in the highest, peace and goodwill toward all men. When I was reading this week, I came across a great read, a book called Upstream by Dan Heath. And Upstream is a book that talks about some of the challenges that keep people from thinking upstream. One of the barriers that Dan wrote that keeps people from thinking upstream, he calls it problem blindness. Problem blindness. He says in his book that the author, uh, Dan, says, uh, shares a great story about 24 radiologists who were given a series of slides to look at. These were slides that they would typically look at when they were looking for cancer. He asked the doctors to look for cancer nodules in the slides and he wanted to see if they would notice a gorilla the size of a matchbook imposed on the slides that they were looking at. Ladies and gentlemen, 83% of these trained radiologists missed the gorilla because they were looking for cancer. Sometimes when you're looking intently for one thing, you often miss everything else. 
And this is what the uh, author calls problem blindness. Quite simply, you're missing the real problem. And can I share with you that when Satan did the damage in Genesis chapter 3, from that point on, he was always attacking men. Because he felt like somewhere between Genesis to Revelation, what God would try to do would come through a man. And so he kept trying men after men, and he was expecting the problem to be duplicated from Genesis. But can I share with you, he had a struggle because while he was focused on looking at men, your God and my Savior was getting ready to do something through a child. And in Luke chapter 2, we're exposed to the moment of the ages. This is the moment of the ages. This is the moment that caused heaven to stand still. Something different happened in Bethlehem when this particular baby was born. These angels said, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior. They announced that the birth of a Savior was happening. It was needed. They simply said, you need to understand, God is resolving a problem that goes back to Genesis. And he doesn't feel like the, the problem will be resolved through a psychiatrist. He doesn't feel like the problem will be resolved through a psychologist. Oh, you got to get this. He said, you don't need another advisor. You don't need another reformer. For what you're dealing with in this world, you need a savior. Lean in, child of God, because sometimes you need to understand what you're going through in life. You don't need another boyfriend. You don't need another girlfriend. You don't need another house. You don't need another car, because you'll just carry the same problems to another problem and another location. What you need is a savior, because the savior can come into an old situation and bring new revelation. Can I find somebody in here that says that your life wasn't changed because you bought a car, because you bought a house? Your life was changed when the Savior of the world. And the Bible says that suddenly when this baby was born, angels showed up. A host of angels showed up praising God and there was a host of angels that formed the choir at the birth of this baby. And listen what they say, glory to God in the highest peace. Oh God, I have to get to the latter, but let me stop by the former. The first thing Deacon S. Richards, he says, is peace. He says, listen, in order for you to appreciate what my, what my son is going to bring, you got to understand peace. Because what he brings to you is something that liquor can't give to you. Something that we can't give to you. Something that a good boo can't give to you. That he's going to give you three levels of peace. He's going to give you first, peace with God. Then he's going to give you two, peace with your yourself and then third he's going to give you peace with other people lean in child of God let me preach if you want to know peace you can't know peace until you know Jesus you can't get along with people without Jesus And when there are things in your heart that shouldn't be as hard to sleep at night. But I believe I got 10 people in here that know that when you get it right with God, you can sleep at night. You don't have to walk the floor at night. Because if you got a God that neither sleeps or slumber, what are you doing awake at night? Look at two people and say, I can sleep at night. Mm. So... So he says, he said, they're singing, they're singing. They say, glory to God in the highest peace that this baby is bringing a level of peace that this world has never known. 
No governor can bring this peace. Go governors may give you a little law in the land, but the governors can't give you peace in your heart. This is a baby that can give you peace not only in the land, but peace in your mind, peace in your soul, peace in your spirit. Is there anybody in here? The reason you look good is not because of the mascara you put on. It's because of the peace God put in your heart. You don't stress like you used to. You don't worry like you used to. Because when Jesus comes in your heart, he brings peace. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, he says down here in this little barn, in this little barn, I'm going to show you something. Angels coming to celebrate this little package that don't look like much, that don't seem like much, but says about this package, y'all ain't feeling me, in this package in the barn glory to God y'all missed that I gotta do it again and this package in the barn it don't look like nothing deacon as Lord but these angels showed up over this package oh God I feel like I'm preaching to five people this ain't these angels came to give glory to God over something in an unlikely package I believe I'm preaching to 250 people on Facebook can I tell you something people never thought that the glory of God would be in you from knowing the stuff you used to do Lord have mercy don't make me call a roll people would never think that the power of God knowing where you used to be who you used to be with y'all ain't talking to me here the stuff you used to do you ought to wave your hand and say I thank God because God moves in unlikely packages People may talk about where you used to be, but you ought to say, wait a minute, if angels can show up to give glory to God over something in an unlikely package, then God can get glory out of my life. I'd never crossed all the T's, I never dotted all the I's, but I still got the glory. Can I find 20 people in here to wave your hand and say, I still got it? You may not call me, but I still got it. You may not invite me to your house, but I still got it. Because God's glory glory is in unlikely packages and the angels had to come down minister lucas and tell the shepherd say listen when you go look for the glory uh uh it's gonna be in a manger uh wrapped in swaddling clothes uh, uh, lying in a manger. Can I go deeper? Uh, 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 the thing that you're going to be praising God is in a feeding trough. Not in a hospital. In a feeding trough. And do you know if the angels did not tell the shepherds, they would have not known where to look. They would have wasted their time knowing something was out there, but they didn't know where to look. Can I put five cent in the pocket meter? Sometimes you ought to thank God because he told you where to look. You would still be looking for something 20 years if he didn't tell you where to go. Oh God, if God didn't give you a word, he's your GPS system. You would have been walking all around it, all by. Have you ever been in the house looking for something and it was always right there, but for some reason you... Oh God! So, so they say. Listen, you, you're gonna see him. He's gonna be in the feeding trough, and so, and so now I'm excited because for the first time in the Bible, I'm seeing angels do something that they didn't do in Genesis. Oh God! Because when I read Genesis, I discovered when God put Adam and Eve there, He told them what to do. When they did not do it, He sent angels down to the garden to make them ushers to dismiss Adam and Eve out the garden but he put in the angel's hands flaming swords they didn't say a word they just moved the swords oh, I knew God was mad watch this because the angels wasn't talking God wasn't speaking and the angels was waving a sword because he had to dismiss Adam and Eve from the garden by the time we get 
to Bethlehem. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, God, angels are not waving swords. They're singing. Something good must be on the horizon. They're not putting nobody out. They're actually singing praises to God. Whenever angels start singing in your life, you ought to start dancing. Whenever angels start giving glory to God, something good is on the way. They're no longer holding swords. They're singing glory to God. So, so he says, glory to God in the highest, peace and goodwill, 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 listen, toward all men. This baby is not just for a few people. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. This, this baby is not just for the rich and the famous. It's something in this baby for everybody, y'all. It's something in this baby to help everybody. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't just come for a group or a clique? He came for everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only. Oh God, oh God, I, I got to get in here. So, so he says, listen, it's all good, people of God, because he can be found. You're taking notes, write that down. It's all good because he can be found. What you mean? The angels came and told the shepherds where he is. Oh God, shepherds were not big time people. They were not people who had entourages. They was looked at Deacon Fitchett as low vessels. They were looked at as people who were not big time in society. But the angels came to tell the shepherds where he is. You don't understand. Even even though he's Jesus, he won't to be found. Oh God. Even though he's Jesus, you can find him if you want him. I don't know about you, but that makes me shout. I don't care if you're on drugs, you can find him if you want. I don't know if you're in a bad relationship, you can find him if you want him. I don't care if you drink the bottle, sun up to sun down. If you want Jesus, he's able to be. Can I talk to somebody? Jesus, watch this. God had to go to a prophet in jail to say, Jeremiah, call me. I want you to find me. I want to bless your family. I want to bless your ministry. I want to bless your children. But you got to open up your mouth. Can I find 20 people to open up your mouth and call on the name of God? Because if you call them. He says, he says. He said he can be found. If you go there, you're going to discover that he's there. Now watch this. It's a surprise because he's God's son. But when you go there, he says, I'm going to tell you what he's going to be wearing. He will not be wearing Ralph Lauren. Oh God. CG, he won't be wearing no North Face. Oh God, he's not going to be putting on no Hugo. Oh God, but he's just going to be having on swaddling clothes. Y'all don't understand. I said, Lord, why he's wearing swaddling clothes? He says, you got to remember if my people love my word. I don't work from the beginning to the end. I work from the end to the beginning. Because if you look at him with swaddling clothes, oh God, lying in the manger, he's going to have the same thing on 33 three years going in the tomb but the good news is just like he won't stay in the manger he won't stay in the tomb oh god I wish I had somebody just like I got angels right here when he get in the tomb I'm gonna have angels right there look at somebody and tell them it's all good it's all good but now watch this point number two is all good because it's being fulfilled. It's being fulfilled. What, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, I thought it was interesting that he might reach out to shepherds. He didn't reach out to policemen or he, he didn't really, really reach out to traffic controllers. He, he didn't reach out to cooks. He didn't reach out to governors. He reached out to shepherds. Somebody shout shepherds. I said, Lord, I, I got to understand. Why did you reach out to shepherds? He says, well, you got to remember that shepherds understand more about what we're dealing with than anybody. Mm. I said, what you mean, God? He says, well, you got to look at what shepherds deal with. They deal with sheep. <laughs> he says, does they start off as sheep? He said, no, 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 no. They start off as little lambs. Mm. 
Oh God, and so I have to deal with shepherds because they understand the importance of a lamb. Every sheep that they have started off as a lamb. Whether they kept the sheep, whether they got rid of the sheep, they understood it started as a lamb. So they understand the importance and the purity of a lamb. Let me work on this. And so when I looked at Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, there were many things that shepherds had to do. When the death angel came down through Egypt land, the only ones who made it out were the ones who had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. And so what I had to do from Genesis to Malachi was to duplicate what happened in the garden. Because in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned, God had to kill an animal to put the skin around man. God had to make a sacrifice. He had to kill something because without the shedding of blood, if I have three Bible readers in here, there would be no remission of sin. So what happened now is that since Genesis, we are introduced to sacrificial offerings. Birds would be sacrificed. Birds after birds, doves and turtle doves. Oh God. Uh, sheep would be sacrificed on the altar. All types of animals from one experience to the next experience because all was trying to duplicate something that they had no power in itself to duplicate. So after you did one sacrifice, you would have to do another one. Look at somebody and say, do another one. And so what happened in the text, when he started to bring shepherds, he says, shepherds, you know that we've had so many sacrifices when Abram was up on the mountain. And he was supposed to give his own son. Once I saw he was truthful to me, I told him to turn around. When he turned around, there was a ram caught in the thicket. The ram got on the offering table because without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. And so the reason I had to get these shepherds, because they know what it's like to sacrifice a lamb. So when they looked at the Jesus in the manger, their minds start thinking about so many things. They thought about Noah built the ark. They thought about Abraham built an altar. They thought about the fact that Moses built the tabernacle and Solomon built the temple. But God built a hill called Calvary. This baby is built for something else. Something bigger than big. You got to catch this. This baby means we don't have to sacrifice like we used to. When this baby goes on Calvary's cross, you don't have to go on a cross like that no more. This baby has so much power in it. When this baby do it, it's going to be done right. Can I find three people in this house? House that know what it's like when God do it for you. You don't have to duplicate what God does. God is so good when he do it right, it don't have to be done no more. Look at somebody and say he'll do it right for you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Watch this. I gotta go here. <laughs> he says it's all good for thirdly because I have favor. <laughs> I have faith. Mm, let me work on this. See, when you see this text and he says that the baby will be in a feeding trough. <laughs> oh God, that's why the shepherds come because the very people who raise lambs for a living uh, will meet for the first time the lamb of God the very ones who raised them from a little wee oh God they get to meet face to face the lamb of God the very ones who feed every day who close every day for the first time they get to meet the lamb of God 
time. Hey. It's a different type of meeting because this is the first time uh, where the creator hey. is in the hands uh, of the created. Uh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Hey. Angels have been struggling because they saw back in Genesis hey. things were different. Hey. When man fell, God was upset. Hey. And they've been watching this movement laterally for years. Hey. But now they recognize that the seat beside God that's missing hey. is because God the Son hey. has come into human flesh hey. and he's not down in the Hilton Motel hey. but he's down in a feeding trough hey. and so angels had to get out of heaven hey. because they know this is the greatest work that God has ever done hey. the first words that comes out of their mouth Lord I feel you is glory to God in the highest not just glory to God because we gave glory to God help me preach you in Job 38 when man saw the world for the first time that's the first time angels sung in the Bible Lord help me hear but now we see the second time angels sung in the Bible it's when the incarnate God comes through a feeding trough they leave heaven and the dignities they form a heavenly choir and they say this is not about him this is glory to God in the highest the best work that our God has ever done is down in a feeding trough the thing that's going to turn this thing back right we're looking on it in a feeding trough look at your neighbor real quickly and say neighbor it may not look like much but that don't mean it's not much don't despise the day of small beginnings because God is not through if he gave you something to do you got to tell yourself that I got a made up mind look at your neighbor and say neighbor I got a made up mind you got the wrong neighbor look at that other neighbor that got a little holy ghost and said neighbor I got a made up mind can I get a witness here Jesus is in a feeding trough but he shows us that nature forms us and sin deforms us and school informs us but only Christ transforms us if you want to be better you got to get Jesus if you want to be stronger you got to get Jesus if you want to grow oh you got to call on Jesus look at somebody give them an air high five and say Jesus I said Jesus I said Jesus Jesus I got the clothes now but I stopped by to tell you that when Jesus shows up it's all good he wants your good he's going to enhance the little good you got because the Lord is good I said the Lord I wish I had some church folk I said the Lord he is good even in the manger he magnifies good even with swaddling clothes he multiplies good look at somebody and say the reason I got joy I got Jesus the reason I got to praise him I got Jesus the reason I wave my hand I got Jesus is there anybody is there anybody that can testify? 
I'm going to make it because I got Jesus. He walks with He talks with me and he tells me that I'm his own. Can you take five seconds? Testify to that neighbor beside you and tell him I love him because he loves me. Testify to your neighbor. Oh! Oh! Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Can I close now? I want to tell you why I love Jesus. He's so good. There's some things that's good for you that's not good for others. But Jesus is good for everybody. He's so good. He can turn a bad Friday into a good Friday. He can turn your dark days into good days. Is there anybody that can open up your mouth and say, I got a reason to give God praise. I got a reason to open my mouth. I got a reason to shout hallelujah. Oh, shucks. Ah, a reason to make noise because you don't know where I've been, what I've been through. If I got some praises, take 15 seconds, give them your best praise for making a way, opening a door, turning the light on. Good afternoon. I got the clothes from one of God's Holy Ghost headquarters. But all I got to tell you, all I got to tell you, all I got to tell you, it's all good. You going to have a good day, a good life, a good night, a good walk, a good talk, a good song, a good preach, a good marriage, because it's all... who this is for I know it's been dark but God told me to tell you it's all good It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all good. I don't know about you, but throw both your hands up in the air. Don't look at nobody but Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus, for making it good. Thank you, Jesus, for working it good. Thank you, Jesus, for turning it good. Thank you! Thank you! Ah! Ah! It's all. Zap, zap, it's all good. Rev, it's all good. It's all good. It didn't look good. Even in the manger. Not with Hamid, Tommy Hill figure clothes on. With swaddling clothes. The angels didn't come to sing because it was over. The angels came to sing because it's all. They said we don't even have to look at the next day. Look at the next week. The mere fact that he's here. It means that this situation. 
is going to turn around. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Stop waiting for what's next. Stop waiting for who's going to show up. Stop waiting for which job is going to call you. If he showed up, it means it's all. Come on, praise him. I got to go. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Angels came and turned the air into a choir stand and said, glory to God in the high. Stand on your feet. We're getting ready to go. In the high. Peace. Get some of this peace, you. You don't need that other stuff if you get some peace. Y'all ain't going to talk to me out here. You don't have to spend your money on that other stuff once you get this piece. Because that stuff won't measure up to this piece. This piece is internal fulfillment. Internal joy. The door's open. Man, woman, boy, or girl. If you want to receive Jesus in the sanctuary, we're going to extend him to you. He loves you. He died for you. He went through a whole lot. The devil thought he was going to come through the form of a man. He came through the form of a... And the devil thought he had you down. But he didn't know that God was doing something different in your life. Though you're unlikely package, you still got God's glory. And God's favor. If you want to reach him today, extend that right hand to, to your flat screen. If you're in this house and you don't know Jesus... Point your right hand to me. I'm going to take you through the plan of salvation. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This little baby, he grew up. And just like he was in a manger, he went to the cross. They wrapped him up. Put him down in the tomb. And just like he came out the manger, on the third day, he came out the tomb. Just like the angels sung glory to God in the highest. When he came out the tomb, the angels had to tell him, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He wants to become your Lord. He desires to become your Savior. As you reach that right hand, pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus into this world going to the cross dying for my sins getting up with all power I'm a sinner in need of a savior come into my life with all fullness in Jesus name somebody in here shout amen if you prayed that prayer you're no longer in darkness you're in the marvelous light you need to follow up this commitment with getting a part of a local branch that preaches Jesus, that teaches Jesus, that trains you to do what God has called for you to do. City of Joy would love to be your church. I would be honored to be your online pastor. Jesus would love to be your Lord. And the Holy Ghost would love to be your confidant. You can go to our website, sign up on the first page. One of our new members ministry will reach out to you so we can help you become all that God would call for you to be in Jesus' name. Somebody give God a hand to praise. Lift your voice and sing with us. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, oh, what a privilege to carry. Everything to God. If you've been blessed today, put your hands together. If you've been blessed, have a blessed week. We have Rewind Wednesday on Wednesday. Those of you getting ready to go out of town, we bless God for you. We thank God for you. And we love you.
Come on, even at home, stand on your feet, virtual viewers. We're going to give them the honor. We're going to give them the praise. Let's go, y'all. I'll give you the honor. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'll give you the praise. Oh, he's been good to me. Forever and ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll lift up your name. Come on, look at him. I'll give you the honor. If the Lord been good to you. we thank you for this day thank you for this worship thank you for your vibrant worshipers thank you for every virtual viewer across the world let your favor rest upon us your favor on our family your favor on our finances your favor with our future father we ask that you let your glory keep being revealed in unlikely places we're going to give your name to praise wherever we are and wherever we go. Bless us, God. Strengthen us, God. And keep us in the precious name of Jesus because we know it is all good. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Now, henceforth and forevermore, let every believer that loves God say amen. Amen. If some